Hey everyone, Pete from London Camera Exchange. You join me once again outside in the British weather. Yesterday was blissful sunshine. Unfortunately, today is a little bit windy, a little bit damp. So we've taken a bit of shelter under a tree here. Um, but I'm joined by Dave Parry, the guru of all knowledge <laughs> from Canon once again for some new products. I mean, you've just hit us with the R5, the R6 this year, the new lenses. Yep. And now you've got some more stuff to show us. So um, thanks for joining us. And I mean, what have we got now? Yeah, so I'm um, really pleased to say we've got more lenses coming out all the time. And this is this is the latest one. Um, so this is a 70 to 200. And you might say, hang on a minute, you've already launched an RF 70 to 200. And yeah, yeah we have. We launched the 2.8 version um, earlier on in the year. But I'm really pleased to say we've now got an F4 version. So it's IS, it's USM, um, and it's image stabilized as well. But this is the F4 version of the 2.8 that we launched, like I say, earlier on in the year. Now, straight off the bat, looking at it, it doesn't look like it could possibly be a 7200 mil because that is really quite small. And this is the power of the R series, being able to create lenses this small and this lightweight. Um, when you don't have to retro focus, you can do away with um, amounts of glass and you can make these lenses smaller and lighter. Now, it works in the same way as the 2.8 in that you have the extender, so it extends out. Um, and what we've done is we've used, once again, the same technology that's on the 2.8 in that you have a filter built into here to right. try and eliminate dust and moisture and that kind of thing. But the beauty of having this kind of system is that is the size of the lens. It's so small and so lightweight. Um, so as I mentioned, it's, a, it's an image stabilized lens. Um, it's a five stop image stabilizer. Um, if you use it on an R5, which I've got on here, or you use it on the R6, you can get about seven and a half stops of image stabilization. Wow. So even though you don't get that 2.8, yeah. you've still got that ability to shoot in low light because you can make really good use of the, the image stabilizer. So you mentioned the 2.8 quite a lot. Are there many similarities between these two lenses? Um, so the other big similarity, um, I suppose, is it's got dual nano USM motors inside it, which is for the autofocus. Right. And the beauty of um, using dual nano USM is that it uses a lot less energy. It's also a lot faster and also very quiet. So this is a great lens for video as well as still shooting because that, that autofocus is really smooth, really controllable, and also very quiet. Obviously, you've got it mounted on the R5 there, which has a really large megapixel count. Glass needs to keep up with that. Now, can this F4 perform and form that partnership, really, with the R5? Absolutely, absolutely. So the, the, the RF glass is at the next level to EF, and that's just simply because the way the technology has moved on now and the ability to get this, let the lenses closer to the sensor gives you this increase in technology. Um, also, other things that are really, really cool with that, it's not just about the, the power of the optics to give you the better image quality. You can do things like, um, we've managed to um, get the minimum focusing distance down on this. Okay. So it's now 60 centimeters rather than a meter before. And you wouldn't really think about using these for not really macro photography, but yeah. close-up photography, but they can do it really, really well. Um, the magnification is point, um, uh, 0.28 times. So you can get quite close to your subject and um, really get some lovely effects with this lens. RF lenses obviously have the control ring towards the front of the lens. Uh, has the F4 still got this feature? Yes, it has, yeah. So you've got the three rings on here. Um, some of our RF lenses only have two rings. Then we have a switch to switch between them. But this one has the three rings. So you've got the control ring, which is obviously customizable. And then you've got the focus ring. And then you've got the zoom ring there as well. There is also a lock this side. Right. So you can lock that to stop it from sliding out when you've got it over your shoulder or something like that. Um, buttons on the side here, you've got the focus limiter. Um, you've also got the image stabilizer functionality as well and you've got the three modes on here so you've got the three different types of image stabilizer really depending on what subject that you're shooting so even though this is a very small lightweight lens it really um, is <laughs> yeah it really is isn't it um it's actually um as things stand at the moment it's the world's smallest and lightest um 70 to 7200 f4 lens and it's actually 30 if i get it right it's 32 percent smaller than the ef version which i've actually got here actually just put it with me to show you. And that's the, that's the EF version, and that's the RF version. And it is a considerable other. difference so, between the cool. two of those. Yeah. yeah, so you can really see the difference there. Obviously, if you zoom out, they then become comparable in size. But when it's zoomed like that, you have seen your kit bag. Yeah, exactly. Much smaller and lighter lens. So, and for um, anyone who's sort of looking for their next lens, you know, telephoto tends to be on the radar quite early on. You know, mirrorless is designed to keep your kit small and light and you guys producing these lenses and certainly something that small, you know, that's not far off what? 
cup of coffee or you know, <laughs> yeah. can a Coke sort of size. Oh, absolutely, yeah, I would, I would agree with Which that. Which in your kit bag, you're just not gonna notice. And one thing you do notice when you shoot with this as well is how the weight has moved this way. So because it is shorter, there's a lot more weight this side rather than being at the end. So you find it much more balanced, really nice on an R5 or even on an R6. I think this is lovely on an R6 or an RP which is obviously a very light camera. This suddenly becomes a very small, lightweight combination. Um, um, but yeah, it is great to be able to have lenses of this size and weight. So when are we likely to see these on the market? Well, hopefully these will be with us by the end of November. Um, so it should be really exciting to get them out there and get people out shooting with them. Oh, that's really cool. And yeah, like I said, I mean, the size and the weight is something which is really quite quite stunning about this lens. Um, so I think anyone who's looking for that next telephoto or just the next lens in their sort of um, their kit outfit, this is definitely worth looking at. So if you'd like any more information, uh, please check out the link below or uh, head into your local London camera exchange.